Hi there. So we are back to learning 6502 assembly. Last time we saw this exercise where we made the Apple II bell ring by calling a uh, monitor subroutine that's in address FBDD. And now we are going to take a next step and see how we can print things on the screen, how we can print characters. So this is uh, how our program starts. It will get a bit uh, longer in a minute, but uh, let's start small. So what's happening here, you can recognize, first thing we do is we do a jump subroutine to subroutine that's uh, on memory address hexadecimal FC58. And that's basically the home command, the clear screen command. So that's what we, we first do. And then our goal is to put characters on the screen. So we do that by putting uh, them in the video memory of the Apple II. Of course, you need to know what the addresses are. We are going to use uh, to start address hexadecimal 700, which is going to be around this region of the screen. So if we put a byte, that means a certain character on this memory address, we see uh, the character on the screen. This is quite different from modern computers because you have memory protection between different processes. So you have a lot of programs and they may interact uh, with uh, video memory, but they do that uh, via the operating system. And the operating system is kind of avoiding that one program makes a mess of uh, what the other program needs. But in our case, I mean, the Apple II was a very simple system. It was uh, a single user, a, a single execution thread. So there's no two programs running uh, at once. So there's no multi-processing of any kind happening. And the, the memory is just wide open for us programmers. We can go straight to the video memory and just uh, put things there and it works, of course. Um, that's very easy to <laughs> also shoot ourselves in the foot uh, when we do that. But uh, yeah, that's actually the beauty of these uh, older, simpler machines is that you, you get uh, closer to the hardware, you kind of get to understand what's going on, which makes it easier to make the jump to more modern, more complex uh, machines. So I was saying we want to put a character there on uh, this memory location, but we cannot simply go and put the character directly. What we need to do is we first need to load this character into one of the processor registers, and then we have a uh, operation, an assembly operation to take the content of that register and uh, put that on the, uh, the memory address. So we have uh, three registers in uh, the 6502 processor, and in this case, we're going to use the A register. This has nothing to do with the character A. It's just the convention that this is the name of one of the three registers of the um, uh, processor. So when we call the LDA or load into A um, command, we are putting a certain content in the A um, register. And uh, this, this content could be something that's uh, uh, coming from memory. Uh, we would then just put a memory address as an argument. But in our case, we don't want to put something that's in memory. We really want to put the value $C1. It's the literal value $C1. And this is the value for the character A. Um, and we indicate that this is not a memory address, but rather a literal value by adding this uh, pound sign at the beginning. So the pound sign says this is a literal value, not a memory address. The dollar sign is saying this is an hexadecimal number and C1 is the actual number that corresponds to A. And then once this line is uh, executed, we have the character A in the accumulator, I'm sorry, in the register named uh, A. Uh, and then we uh, make uh, this store from A 
instruction. This is actually taking whatever is in A and putting this in the memory location that you indicate here. So this is going to take the, that A character and it's going to put that in the $700 address. And that should be, as I mentioned, around uh, this uh, region of the screen. Okay, uh, let's uh, give it a try. Okay, our program is uh, 10 bytes long and it's uh, sitting at memory address uh, uh, hexadecimal 300. And uh, now let's just execute it. Yes, we have the character A a bit above where I said it should be. Uh, really bad uh, with uh, spatial coordinates. So now let's uh, make this uh, a bit uh, more interesting by adding other characters and I will do that uh, offline. See you in a minute. Okay, so we are back and now we have a slightly uh, more complete example with other characters. So here we are basically redoing the trick. We are loading another literal value into the register A and uh, this uh, $D0 value corresponds to the character P and then we are putting this in memory location 701. You see that we are incrementing, right? Which means that we are putting on the next uh, character uh, position, which is after the A. And then because we are writing the word, you guessed, apple, uh, we don't need to change the character. It's again the P. So we just uh, put another P in the next position. Then we load a with uh, character L and put it in the, in the next position and finally with a character E. So let's uh, give this a try. So 28 bytes long. Okay, this is the example that we have in the book. Um, now, something I would do here, and again, I'm not sure if this is actually the, the best move because I am not uh, very familiar with uh, uh, assembly myself. But one thing I don't like here is that when we are reading this code, we are sort of relying on the comments to understand what's going on here. And uh, we could do something like this. Let me say character A is a constant that... Uh, corresponds to this value. And uh, here we refer to the constant. So uh, when we do this, I mean, it becomes kind of obvious what we're doing here. We are loading character A and then we are storing it in um, memory uh, position 700. We don't even need the, the comment. So let's see if that works. We still have the same 28 bytes of data because this is, I mean, it, the, 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 the resulting code is exactly the same. The only difference is that our source code is uh, just more readable. At least I, I think so. Still does the same, right? Same principle can apply to the other characters. Yeah, still works. So you can see how we could uh, just change all these references to literal values to, to use constants and, and then make the code more readable. And that's it for today. Thank you.